Welcome, Avorians and all of our new subscribers to the Phase 2 launch call. Just kidding. This is just the midweek strategy call from yours truly, Steve Vettel. I am the risk manager of the organization. Welcome to a lot of our new subscribers. It's good to have everybody. If I could ask you, please, inside the chat window, Q&A window is open as well, but inside the chat window, if you guys could just let me know if you can hear me okay, and if you can see the risk disclosure screen. We'll go ahead and get started. Okay, all right, cool. <clears throat> I know Zoom was having some issues this morning because there's just an overwhelming majority of folk around the world on their platform. And I'll tell you, man, hats off to Zoom. It's don't know the stock's worth 553 bucks a share, but they certainly have made it happen. So let's go through the risk disclosure if we can, please. Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Trading on margin and utilizing leverage can carry an even higher level of risk that can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange markets using any of our software alert products, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal level of investment objectives, level of experience, and risk tolerance. Uh, there's a possibility that you could lose your entire account. So with that in mind and all the scary stuff, page two of the risk disclosure, just sharing any of the results from Alexander Iris Einstein, actually probably need to augment this page and add in the other softwares that are coming out. Um, please do not use the term company recommended settings. Avoria Prime doesn't have any recommending settings. We're not a financial advisory firm. They just license software they can use however they want. Um, we don't have anything to do with your brokerage account. We don't set it up. We don't have access to your brokerage account that is only and single-handedly run by yourself. So we just don't solicit or take investments. My primary role on these calls on Tuesdays and Saturdays is essentially just going through what's going on in the market setting strategy, hopefully some guidance as to the software. Um, do understand that I'm getting ramped up on the softwares. I will not have at this current level the expertise that the developers have. So I highly suggest um, that. And I'll tell you what, let me just take a poll here while I'm getting reorganized with the next screen. And the poll is not going to be like an organized poll, but it's just the question. Um, do you guys know when the developers' calls are? Have you guys seen some of the phase two launch calls? Because I'll tell you, if you haven't, I would highly suggest um, the call. And I could put the links on, or you could certainly get the links from the back page. But, you know, Sal Leto's call on Saturday, man, it was off the charts good. Uh, my hat's off to those guys and the whole team that have just been working feverishly to get this up. I mean, this is, I mean, guys, we're talking like collaboration levels that I didn't even see working at some of the best. Uh, big Wall Street firms I used to work for. <laughs> I'm seeing better collaboration with Avoria. Um, so it's great to see this kind of stuff. But um, for those that do not, because um, the Stratum is called Sunday 11 a.m. Eastern time, variable Saturday 11 a.m. So essentially that's right after my call. So I must, I will always try and be on these calls as well. You know, if the developer needs to make reference to me or wants me to jump in with something's up, um, especially in the variable calls, because I'm going to literally be right there. So I'll just have to move my golf games up to later in the day. Um, but Gearbox, Friday at 11 a.m. Neo is not solidified yet. Um, so do, do keep in mind, um, are you telling me that variable has changed? I see, Molly. Variable is 8 a.m. Saturday, because that's not what I just got from the corporate note. Keep in mind, these are Eastern time. So. <clears throat> yeah okay so you guys can make the adjustments for whatever other time zone you're in but 11 a.m um <clears throat> 8 a.m uh pacific time that's correct so everybody in the east in the west coast i should say should uh you know hopefully be out of bed and ready to go or just listen to the recording so let's jump into let me close out this powerpoint let's go into the Forex Factor. I wanted to show you guys this because let me make sure I'm sharing the right screen. This is definitely a first. I've never seen this one before. Let me move over. There we go. You guys should see the Forex Factor screen. Oh, website's down. 
Um, so <clears throat> what I showed, and I could just open this up um, on a different screen here. I'll show you what my um, Saturday notes look like so we can go back and see that anyway. Let me just jump to the one page layout here. <clears throat> so can you guys see this um, Word screen now? Okay, cool. So this, these are the notes. If you guys don't look at the notes that we post in the back office, these are the notes I typically try and get out, although I've been a bad boy and been kind of late with them because of our whole relaunch. Uh, but essentially, they usually hit the website uh, on Sunday. Just notes that show what's going on with the Forex Factory calendar this week. Um, now, <clears throat> yesterday, uh, Chairman Powell spoke. Um, it's been... Um, and I'll jump back into the charts, but I wanted you guys just to see that coming up, um, the developers are trading this week. Um, I've been trading, although I've been in some client meetings and so forth, but um, these are what's going on as far as events, the you know, monetary policy minutes, if you guys trade anything related to the Aussie dollar, this was all yesterday, nothing today. And going forward, Friday's the big day as far as the Eurozone. Um, so for those accepting trades with, um, Alexander, um, which is, it almost seems like my risk management's going to have to, um, you know, it's almost going to have to be software specific going forward. Right. Uh, but most of the softwares will trade through the other softwares will trade through events. So I think going forward, if you're not an Alexander or Einstein user, um, this calendar, I think it's important to look at, but it might not have as much impact as far as how you act in accepting trades or not. All right, let's jump into the charts real quick. S&P, always start off by looking at equities. I think it's important. Standard Poor's 500. Each of these candles on all the charts I show you will represent one day. Just a basic technical analysis. Let your heart not be troubled. Don't feel the need to learn this. I'm going to go through this I'm with all of our new subscribers. And I'll get everybody at least generically on board from a macro view perspective. But it's always important to do technical analysis on anything, in my opinion, if you are manually trading or if you want just a general overview, as I try to do um, on the markets. Let's go into the dollar. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we are in essentially the third day. If you can see these candles here. We're in the third day of a decline in the dollar. Okay. Now, not a lot can be gleaned from this because since literally the middle of the end of the month of July, we've been in a tight range, essentially basing between 94 and 92 in the US dollar. So what does that mean? So it means that hasn't been any big news to have any parabolic moves outside of this, you know, which always makes it a little bit crazy and less predictable and more risky um, in software land, <clears throat> whether you're manually trading or you have some sort of semi or fully automated strategy trading for you, it still makes it difficult once you break out of tight ranges. And this is what's called a base. So as we've been basing, if you will, through this, I ultimately think um, depending on how some of these packages work out with U.S. Uh, Congress and <clears throat> approval by um, the current administration, if they get it passed or they can come together and the Treasury Secretary and <clears throat> our uh, policymakers are working on some sort of stimulus or bailout to whatever you want to call it. It's a devaluing event to the dollar. So if you take a look at a monthly chart, I still think we are essentially going to be shooting for somewhere in the area of, I'm going to say like 80, literally like 86. This, this is just going to basically lift um, a lot of the other majors, especially ones like the Euro USD. I think we'll see, and let me just drop back to it daily. I think we'll see this Euro US dollar in this chart type formation, which is almost a complete reverse of the, of the DXY, right? The dollar, um, I think we'll see this continue to blast past this upper black uh, resistance line um, running right uh, essentially at the 1956-ish level. Um, 
once that happens, you'll see different advice coming out from me from a risk management standpoint, if you're using Alexander or Einstein, um, maybe not as important, uh, but you know, certainly if you're manually trading outside of these algos, uh, we got a ton of them coming on board. So <clears throat> I got a, a bunch of questions on stuff that's really unrelated to what I do, but I think it's just been a really positive outlook with these emails I got. And I would just say, guys, you know, as far as subscriptions and the models and, and everybody in, in our back office and our coders and, and Bill Wynn as, as our, our technology office, you guys doing a fantastic job, but it's just like anything else. I mean, there is going to be glitches. It's, it happens even with Fortune 500 organizations that are switching over, you know, from a developer's platform to a live um, you know, we've got <laughs> um, a, a pretty smooth launch, in my opinion, uh, whereas I've been at other organizations that, in these relaunches of websites and you know, databases have just been a disaster, as you guys probably know. So give them some time. All the stuff will work out. Just make sure you communicate what I've said um, to those you think are not watching my weekly calls or if they're not involved in any of our phase two launch calls. I think that Jay should win at some point. You know, I hate to say you can watch videos when you're driving in the car, but you can at least listen to the content um, and still keep your eyes on the road, right? <clears throat> so there's my risk management tip for watching videos in the car. <laughs> I don't watch the screen, I just listen to the content. So that is the Euro USD. Let's take a look at the GBP. Now, again, notice in this daily chart, we've had a lot of these individual candles as doji showing up, which is just indecision type stuff. Doesn't necessarily mean we're going to rip one way or the other. It just means that right now I see one, two, and technically three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's an inordinate amount of doji candles, which is an indecision type of day. And I think that based upon the fact that, you know, in approximately 23 days, we have one big election that most of the planet is going to be focusing on. Um, we're in a wait and hold pattern. It's kind of like those planes circle in an airport. It's kind of where we are right now. So from the standpoint of the GBP USD in terms of the daily chart, you know, we've bounced off the green line, which is a 200 MA. It's a moving average. Um, shows a lot more longer term. It's also been an excellent predictor with the daily chart um, in where this currency has gone. So you can see how it came up against it as resistance, poked its head a little bit above it, and then came back down into what was a trending up pattern here. And a lot of this is related to Brexit, right? Uh, but a lot of it is also related to the moves in the dollar because this is on the other side of the coin. So <clears throat> as we've seen a big lift off of just bananas moves here during the pandemic, these currencies have gotten a lot more stable. So ultimately, you know, I, I'm not going to put my foot in my mouth, but ultimately we've stabilized to a certain degree in currency land, at least among the majors. Um, and I think that, you know, going forward, we're going to see more volatility after the election. So my risk management advice is going to become a lot more intense and a lot more specific as one, I get built up with these different softwares, but two, um, you know, for at some point I'm going to need to take a poll. I don't know how I'm going to do this um, of maybe I can get the statistics from the board of who's using what software, right? <clears throat> so we want to make sure we focus on risk management related to the markets, but I'm going to try if I can, um, as I get ramped up with the different softwares to have software related risk discussions, if you will, um, throughout that. So GBP, um, do understand if we broke down below this green line, uh, I probably would not be taking a lot of long trades if you're in uh, the type of software where you have to accept trades one way or the other. Just just know that, especially Alexander, <clears throat> uh, because it, it would more than likely be related to elections and or news breaking on um, Brexit. You know, <clears throat> it's been a little too quiet in Brexit land, I got to tell you. Look, I get it. You know, COVID's taken over. A, a lot of what's gone on in the Eurozone, it is capturing all the attention. But um you know, the UK still plans on exiting the European Union and there's a ton of work still left to be done on that front. <clears throat> so that's the notes there. Also, I want to mention on EURUSD. Um, not that I expect you guys to recognize patterns, but I think it's important. 
<clears throat> if you look at where I'm drawing this line, it's kind of a, it's not a perfect line, but essentially this is what's called a cup with handle pattern. And, um, and you know what, let me try and, eh, let's just do the trend line thing for now. But essentially here's the cup, here's the handle. This is a very popular pattern. Uh, keep in mind that patterns that manifest themselves on daily charts or weekly or monthly, any higher time frame type of charts are much more powerful and they're also much more reliable. Um, as far as statistical win rates coming off of this type of pattern, but we broke above it. So I would expect in any really bad um, sell off the euro, which I can't really see, <laughs> but who knows? I could be wrong. Um, this area, the 1400 area, um, which is also one of the century marks is going to uh, provide a lot of stability. This is definitely a place where I'd be accepting long trades, even that we broke uh, down, I probably wouldn't be accepting a lot of long trades until we got back down and tested this area, in which case I would, right? So this is more specific strategy that's related to an Alexander. Um, it's always, or uh, I'm sorry, an, Al an Alexander. It's always more difficult to, you know, execute individual strategy on Einstein um, because it is taking these trades for you versus you accepting. <clears throat> um and just while we're on the cup with handle, the question is, is there a difference between a cup with handle trend and a teacup? Or they just, the key is, is that it's not as important as what the pattern looks like. Um, it is most important that the pattern shows a broadening out or a basing, if you will, kind of like we've seen here, a basing and then a movement up to the previous resistance level and then a pullback, a shallow pullback, and ideally on lower volume. See this volume bar is down at the bottom here. Notice that this pullback was on lower volume. And I know, and I, I think the problem I have with trading view, just a side note, um, is you know, I don't know where these guys are aggregating this damn volume from. I mean, ideally in a perfect world, which I don't think is going to happen, um, you know, we'd have all 14 banks that execute liquidity in the Forex markets for the different brokers report volume. I think that would be fantastic. And we can really pull some stuff from that kind of analysis. Right now, it's just we're betting on, I don't know where the hell TradingView is getting this. I know they got like 11 feeds coming into this software from different Forex feed providers, but I don't know how accurate this volume is. But the point is of this is that um, on a declining volume, we come back up against it. Um, and then we literally break from it. This is actually the buy point. So for all of you investors, business daily lovers, or William O'Neill, can slim guys out there, um, this is, and he's like the master of chart patterns in, in his newspaper. He used to cover a lot of this stuff. This is actually the buy point. So if you're buying, uh, I should say, if we're breaking above this point, um, you really don't want to be short something like this, okay? Um, because more than likely it's going to rip as it did right to the next level of resistance, which is where it's been bouncing between. Um, if you look way back on, on, you know, weekly or monthly charts, which I'm not going to expand back, you'll see this is a huge level of resistance. So we're spending time here, just like as it corresponds to the, <clears throat> um, the DXY, you know, which is a perfect inverse correlation to that movement. So essentially here, Right now, not a lot of risk, not saying there can't be, you know, risk that creeps up tomorrow. It takes us out of these levels in both of these, or I should say all three of these currencies in this ring we're discussing. Um, to a lesser degree, the Euro, JPY, um, you know, we have a descending, <laughs> trending formation, if you will, almost a channel uh, that's going down. If you guys are not clear on what I'm showing you, this is essentially you're just drawing a channel can be sloppily drawn it's not that important <clears throat> but it's showing a trend down we're bouncing between these levels on the way down i'm just going to save this to the cloud <clears throat> showing a trend so ideally the risk positions come from being um long is up against the top of the channel right 
probably don't want to take a lot of long trades here because we might um, break out or reverse, in which case we break out, I'd be wrong. You'd want to take those long trades. But if we reverse and we're staying within the channel, notice every time it's popped its head out of this channel, it's reversed back up into it. So there's a lot less risk of accepting trades if you come across the top of the channel, accepting shorts at this point, coming down towards the bottom provided there's not some other levels that add as confluence, but taking a trade down towards the bottom of the channel. So I have a tendency to get pretty deep on this. And for that, I apologize because I want everybody to, at a core minimum, um, understand technical analysis. I don't care if it's from you know some sort of 50,000 foot macro level, that's fine. Uh, but if you just at least generally understand what I'm doing, as I often joke, I have two 90 year old clients uh, females that actually look forward to our quarterly meetings where I show them the charts. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I always joke if uh, Granny Smith at age 91 can understand the basics of the chart, anybody can, including my 12 year old son. Uh, what else do I want to say? That's pretty much it for Euro JPY. Uh, all right, so USD JPY. Let's go to Euro JPY. <clears throat> um, a lot less going on here than in pattern land and we bounced off the 200 day here back in the early July, uh, we've lifted back up off it. Um, I just don't have a lot of feel for where this thing's going. And a lot of it is because, you know, the Euro um, and with the strength that it's had because of the weakness of the dollar. Um, <clears throat> and I have a lot less color um, in terms of what the Bank of Japan's done. They are um, sort of like the, the secret ghost central bank uh, to me because I can never get a lot of feel for uh, what they're going to do. A much, much more clear picture of what BOE, BOC, <clears throat> ECB, IMF, right? The Federal Reserve, the Fed. I have a better idea of what these central banks are doing um, in relation to their dollars or underlying uh, currency markets, money supply, essentially, uh, than I do JPY. So I always get questions. Why don't you do much analysis on this? And don't have a good feel for it, guys. So take a look at GBP NZD. <clears throat> Again, a ton of dojis. This is that wild west currency. I know some of you like to trade. Um, this has you know some pretty significant win rates, but I'll tell you, this thing has just had some absolutely crusher moves. So unless you know what you're doing in Forex land, you can see some of these huge spikes um, during the pandemic. Now, th these are blow your account out spikes. So as I tell people, unless you really know what you're doing, um, you know, and, and I haven't dove that deep in, but I don't think any of the new softwares um, use this currency pair in any kind of optimization model or what kind of currencies to use. All right, so gold. Notice we've got a lot of dojis in gold. Um, not as important to the dollar, but I always like to show the chart, but this is essentially a bullish flag uh, type pattern, which could lift us back up towards the high, <clears throat> in which case, if you're heavy in gold, if I were you guys, I'd take some profits. So that is it for the charts. Let's go to questions. So who here, again, it's sort of like my half-assed poll, right? Who here has successfully set up variable? Type in a V in the chat window. So I'm getting ready to set it up. All right, cool. V for federal, right? <clears throat> so this is good to see. And we're going to have just an absolute sea change of stuff going on at this company, which is great. Um, so bear with me, guys. I'll, I'll get all I'll get all ramped up eventually on this as well. Um, but <clears throat> uh, I've got a <laughs> tell me this isn't great. <clears throat> I've got we've got a number of people on our team that um, come from pretty significant backgrounds, guys. And I, we'll, we'll talk more about that as um, as my team, if you will, uh, guys underneath me, uh, as they allow me to share their story. Um, but I know we've got some pretty significant people that are being positioned on our team that I think maybe we'll be able to utilize, not as much for these strategy calls I run, but I may invite a few on as guests uh, at some point. <clears throat> 
if they can provide any value to um, to the group. One of them um, used to be the head trader um, at uh, Millennium Capital in New York, which is a big hedge fund. <clears throat> now he runs his own research company. So and hopefully I can uh, get Tommy on at some point, <clears throat> have him talk to you guys about um, risk as it relates to the currency markets. Um, he'll talk a lot about DeMarc charts, which we're not going to get too into, but <clears throat> um, yeah. So <clears throat> Luke, what was your question? It said VB, uh, all trades close manually. Um, what's your, is that a question for me? So if you guys start hitting me with all these variable questions, I'm not going to know them yet. I'll be able to answer them all soon. It's it's pronounced variable, <clears throat> although it could be a vera bear. <laughs> um, have you guys seen the uh, FX books for variable? You guys pretty familiar with that? What's going on? Um, do understand some of the developers FX books due to uh, releasing and, and uh, coming out of the software um, have to be covered up um, <clears throat> and have to be taken private. So <clears throat> um, keep in mind, it's one thing I actually learned. I did not know. Depends on the Forex broker. Um, I guess some Forex brokers will run a sweep, just so you guys know. If you're running a demo for like more than 12 months, and I don't know, it would, it would seem to me the sweep should be able to show whether the damn EA is trading active in the account or not, but they'll run a sweep and turn off um, the link. So essentially it just doesn't wipe the MyFX's history out. Um, it keeps the history, but it turns off uh, the actual trading, <clears throat> which I found odd. So that might be something you guys want to ask of your Forex broker. I certainly will be because as we move forward, I mean, there is... Um, demos and all kinds of stuff that many of us, including some of our uh, leaders, are going to want to run in perpetuity, way past 12 months as a demo or a live, right? Um, we want to be able to see if, <clears throat> um, you know, the statistics will continue to calculate in, in my FX book um, and not get shut off for some reason, which seems really strange to me. So <clears throat> I don't know the answers to Gearbox, Stratomus, or Neo's um, release other than the developer's call. Okay. So my whole goal this week was to just get through the strategy call for everybody. Um, and for that question, I just got, here's the Euro daily chart here again, um, get through first couple of days. <clears throat> you know, I, I don't want to overload, um, you know, my guys and stuff. So I just told everybody to sort of hold off on getting set up for a few days past launch, you know, sort of let them clear out the important stuff. You know, we don't, uh, we're not dying to get set up. We need to have it done today. Right. So <laughs> at some point this week, we'll, we'll get them all set up. I'll be able to show you guys these instances running, um, on the VPS. And, uh, once we get them all up, some are going to be live. Some are going to be demo. <clears throat> this one is live <clears throat> variable. Now, keep in mind, I know questions are going to come on the settings. I don't have that dialed in yet, right? So it comes out of the box settings. Uh, but I know there's been some questions as to with some of these FX books are running slightly different settings than what the out of the box stuff. I don't know the answer to that, guys. I will get that for you. Uh, but this is it running a live account. <clears throat> it's done exceptionally well. So uh, what else? Variable call already happened. Are they waiting for the software to release? So software's out, and Nicholas, um, you can you can get set up. You know, switch your subscription or add an additional one. I would suggest for that diversification. Um, but the his call starts um, next Saturday, 11 a.m. Pacific time. I think that's everything. Let me just check my notes. So for those of you that have not, I would subscribe to my trade tracking channel. I don't know if you guys know how to do that. <clears throat> I would recommend everybody be subscribed to that. You know, it seemed to me I have thousands of subscribers that subscribe to that, but I should probably have double that. Now, I get it. Not everybody speaks English, but um, <clears throat> we really should have a lot more. Um, that way we're all dialed in. 
And uh, if you need the link to that, <clears throat> I don't have the ability to post it in chat. Um, but if you guys go into the back office here, I'll show you. Follow along here on the screen if you can see it. So just log into your account, right? Just like you see here. <clears throat> um, and once you log in, just go to the dashboard. Once you go to the dashboard, and I don't have it set up because it's just like a dummy account, but you'll choose the products that you want, and then it'll take you to the onboarding area. Um, or you can go into resources down here <clears throat> and go to the um, forecast or the mid software week strategy and see me, right? <clears throat> see these links right here. I guess I could post this link then, huh? So let me post this. So the question for recommended pairs for variable, we'll get into that as well. I'm going to let the developer handle that first. That's the link to the back office, you know, just the general landing page for <clears throat> my ugly face in the um, midweek software strategy. You can just click on the join the Telegram tracking channel, <clears throat> which is essentially this link pops up. You can download it on desktop, put it on your phone as well. That's what I do. And you guys will be all hooked up. There isn't any other questions. I wish everybody a outstanding week and, you know, have some patience. We will get this launched right. Um, it's already gone fantastic. So, but there's always glitches. So you got to have the patience for that. We'll get past it. I wish everybody the best. Um, actually, one other thing here I'm getting a message for. Yeah, so there is two videos. It's not Dasani. It's just Dasan, D-A-S-A-N. Um, he's our developer for variable lives down in Florida. He's actually a super smart guy. Um, he has done two videos for variable and I don't know where the links are to him. So maybe somebody wants to help out, um, in that respect. You know, I was just waiting for it cause we're relaunching websites, and back offices and all kinds of stuff. I was waiting for all that stuff straightened out and then I'll go in, start sharing all these links to my telegram channel. So you guys can make sure you see his two videos and then obviously all the developers calls each week. Cool. All right, guys, have a great week. I'm out. Vet off the mic. Got any questions, send me an email. May the trades be with you. I think